Um, so, uh, hi Nick, thank you for joining us. Um, so, for um, this special interview um, for Mental Health Awareness Week, we have got Nick Jametta joining us. Um, and I've also got Al Banks here with me as well from Optics. Um, he's going to join me in asking Nick a few questions um, and kind of helping the conversation go along. So, um, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please, to start us off? I can, yeah. So I'm Nick Jametta. Um, I'm a principal product manager. I work at Sainsbury's in our uh, digital and technology team. Um, I guess the reason that uh, I'm talking to you guys today is because for the last couple of years I've been very active in the mental health space. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I'm dressed like this. I should probably <laughs> address that pretty early on. Um, so for the month of May, um, I'm coming out to work. Uh, I work at home due to the COVID-19 situation. I'm going to be coming to work dressed in a different fancy dress costume every day. The intention of that really is to try and bring a bit of a smile to people's faces. I can see the reactions of both of you and they, they mirror many of the people that I, uh, I have uh, calls with. Um, I'm just trying to start a bit of a conversation around mental health um, and I'm also trying to raise some money for a few charities. So this started as just a bit of a pet project, to be honest. Uh, it's something my two children have really enjoyed doing. Um, but so far, as of the last count, I was at about thirteen hundred pounds that I've raised so far. Amazing. Wow. Um, another five days left, so hopefully, my aim is to get to fifteen hundred. But that's my third target because mm -hmm. I've already met my first two. So, is there a link we can share, Nick? I was just going to say, um, I've got the link. Um, I'll share it uh, with alongside the video. That'd Fantastic. be amazing. So I'm raising money for Mental Health UK, NHS charities together, and the Alzheimer's Society. So any donations or sharing gratefully received. Perfect. So um, obviously this year's mental health awareness theme um, is kindness. Um, so what do you think of the theme and what does it mean to you? I mean, for me, I think the theme is massively relevant and pertinent. Um, yep. I guess if you step back a couple of months with what happened to, to Caroline Flack, I think that kind of mm -hmm. essence of kindness is really starting to come out. But I think in the last eight weeks with our lives being sort of tipped upside down with the lockdown, the need to be kind, not only to each other, but to yourself has been massively amplified. Mm -hmm. uh, being kind to yourself is, is actually a really difficult skill, believe it or not. Um, it's something I've struggled with a lot and I still struggle with. And it's something that I'm trying to imbue in my children at, at an early age. Um, but I do think COVID, if, if there are, uh, I look for, I try and look for positives in situations where I can. I think one of the positives is the perception of what it means to be kind, I think, has changed. Mm -hmm. You had this kind of initial rush for people who, who were going out and panic buying, but I think realistically that was the minority. In my experience and in, in, in my world on the road I live on, I see everyday gestures of kindness, of helping each other out. Mm -hmm. I've kind of felt a bit more that kind of war spirit kicking in yeah so to me the kind of theme of the week is, is is pretty much spot on for the challenges that we're all facing right now can yeah, i just jump yeah, in I there think I agree. yeah go for it um so you picked up on something actually that i raised in the live chat um this the in the live stream that we did this morning nick there which is your kids um and i was just sort of surmising about you know the world that our kids are going to grow up in um with social media being so you're yeah, just part of their lives you know we we grew up before social media so we didn't necessarily have that Thanks for um that. Apart from <laughs> 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 but yeah we we remember that world before and they don't won't and you know and there's it, there's things that I read about every day you know around things like online bullying and stuff like that that they I really worry about about them for that kind of stuff so um you you mentioned there that you're trying to get this into your kids um psyche into their kind of everyday life can, can you yeah. give us some ideas like how how do you go about doing that how old are your kids by the way so I've got a four-year-old uh, son called Zachary and a six-year-old called Matilda yeah um, I'm grateful this the primary school Matilda goes to well-being is uh, like a, is quite a core tenant so she learns about it through through school she's a well-being champion which I'm still super proud of she's got a little badge and uh -huh. wow <laughs> she's out with the other kids and stuff um I'm very open with them about you know to a degree to which they would understand at their age about the mental health work I do I we talk a lot about how we feel which is something that when I was growing up you know wasn't 
something that was done particularly, which is probably why I ended up having the difficulties I did. And it's just simple things like at the end of, of the day when you're putting them to bed and you tell them you love them and then we ask them, who else do you love? And they go around, it's like mummy, daddy, Zach, slash Matilda and myself. And that yeah. simple notion of getting them to recognise that there is a need for them to love themselves and to accept themselves, I think is super important. I think it's also facing into the fact that everyone's different. So kids, mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a filter in the same way as adults. So when my children ask me questions about the way people act or look, um, you know, I just I, I just face into it and try to explain to them that we are all made differently and, and that's OK. And just because you're not good at one thing or you look a certain way, that doesn't actually materially affect how you live your life, where you're going to make friends, what you're going to be good at. So for, for me, it's just about trying to normalise it. Yeah, that's a really, really nice way of doing it. I think um, we've tried to do something around kind of gratitude a little bit as well. So yeah, we, we've done, you know, every other day or so when they're going to bed again, we've asked them for something, you know, to tell us something they're grateful for that day or something they've enjoyed that day as well. So we're trying to kind of instill that into them, which is quite nice. Um, they come up with some that. bizarre, bizarre answers. Well, <laughs> yeah, please, please do. <laughs> I bet. I mean, do you, do you, I'm interested, do you, do you, do you practice that same gratitude for yourself? So yeah, the answer is probably yes and no. Um, the answer, yes, my wife is a lot better at it. Um, we went through, as you know, um, some very personal, difficult personal experiences over the last couple of years. So we started to look for things that would help us through that process and gratitude um, was one of them. So there was a point where my wife was literally making kind of 10 points that she was grateful for every single day. Um, yeah. To be completely honest, we've probably fallen off that a little bit, but we still do 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 go back to that every now and again. So I wish I was doing it a bit more, but I'm, you know, I just need to keep reminding myself. But, you know, that's the thing about all of this stuff, isn't it? You've got to, it, it doesn't just stop. You've got to kind of keep doing it and, and keep reminding yourself how important it is, which is why we're doing this kind of thing to kind of raise awareness of it. I mean, massively, it's never ending. And it it's, I guess, that routine and making it habit. So, I, I mean, I, I've tried to practice gratitude probably fairly recently. The way I do it is I just like journal every night. Mm. But the reality is it's not always me being grateful. It's me being really ungrateful at times. And <laughs> I think that that's the trick of it is that with mental health, we've all got it, but we have good days and bad days. And for me, it's about facing into that and accepting it, kind of being OK with it. So at the end of the day I journal and then I read back I think that was a really like negative not a particularly helpful uh piece of writing I've done there well actually I'm being true to myself and honest to myself there's no point trying to force gratitude if that's really not how you feel but I just think it's one of those things that if you you know if you are really struggling sometimes just looking up and thinking okay well I've got x y and z in my life can just help it gives you that extra one percent because there is no there is really no magic wand and that's what makes I think this whole topic very difficult is you know what works for one won't work for the other and it's normally a suite of things it's that kind of toolbox as I call it mm -hmm. you, know, you need yeah. lots of different things at different times to help you try and stabilize your mental health where you can but it will go up and down and I've yeah. certainly experienced the lows and the highs like probably most other people have Sure. Yeah, this came up this morning as well, actually. Um, it's really interesting that everyone's starting to see that um, it, it is something which affects everyone and it, it is very changeable. So it's nice that you've brought that up. Good synergy. It's almost like we planned it. Okay, so um, obviously when you introduce yourself, you said that um, you're quite active in the mental health space and, you know, that's why we've invited you on. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of things you do? Although obviously now that may be slightly different that we're all sat in our houses. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, so I'll just rewind slightly and I should just say that when I sort of share a very high view of my story, I don't like to talk about a particularly tricky subject, but some of it might be a little bit triggering. The reason that I'm so passionate about mental health is that I have my own lived experience, but it was a lived experience that at the time I really couldn't understand it. I didn't process it. I didn't deal with it. I locked away how I felt in a box and tried to bury it. Um, so when I was at university, I basically went into university with a lot of anxiety, with a lot of challenges about the need to feel like I had to act a certain way, look a certain way, be, be a certain way as a man. I think there's when I when I grew up and 
thanks to our earlier point, I grew up in the 80s slash 90s. So <laughs> you know, the view of what a man should be, to me at least, felt quite claustrophobic and quite tightly defined. And I didn't fit that mould. I never felt I, I fit that mould. So I got to university and, and all of that anxiety just sort of hit me like a wave. And I, you know, the pressure to, on a night out, act in a certain way and, um, you know, maybe meet meet someone of the opposite or the same sex, shall we say, I just found totally overwhelming. And it ended up culminating with me with me just feeling so low and, you know, like I, like I added no real value in the world and that I was going to be kind of alone forever and all these horrible thoughts that... I ended up kind of feeling suicidal and I never sort of made an attempt but I was very close and that was really difficult um mm. so I came out of university and I, I never sort of thought I never um looked for therapy I never spoke to anyone about it I like I said back in what 2002 th three mental health wasn't spoken about social media didn't exist in the way it did you didn't, didn't have celebrities talking about it so I buried it I I suppose I subconsciously took steps to try and make myself feel better so I leapt into a career I managed to build it like a really supportive network of friends Sorry. which included a lot of men excuse me that's Alexa um <laughs> I you know I started to do some of the things I hadn't done before like exercising so I'd always shied away from it because the thought of going to a gym was horrifying for me a little bit because I'm a bit lazy, but also, you know, I, I've really struggled with kind of body image as well. Um, but kind of fast forward, I get married, I have children, like life's pretty good. And I haven't really thought about those times. And then kind of a random opportunity came up a couple of years ago. And it felt just, it just felt right to, to share my story. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect anything to come of it. I just thought I share my story and I can sort of retire and wheel back because I'm quite introverted, believe it or not. Um, and I shared my story and the, and the response of me sharing my story was was just so mind-blowing that it, it unlocked a purpose and a passion that I didn't know existed so from that day forward I've made it my purpose to try and create and normalize that mental health affects everyone and that just because you have mental ill health it actually makes no difference on your life chances on your potential on your ability to be happy it's just a moment in time and it, it, it will pass now, for serious mental illnesses, I don't think you can put it in that box in the same way. Then you are going to need you know, medical support and, it, and life might be more difficult. But for the vast majority, even someone who heard who goes through something fairly serious like I did, you can move past it and you can find the light in the darkness. So from that day forward, um, I started vlogging. I started blogging. I started talking very openly, sharing my story. I went back to my old university to kind of share my story and talk to the students about how some of the things they could do to try and not get into the position I did, which was probably one of the best days of my life. It was it was just amazing to be able to give back in that way. Uh, I do a lot of work um, at my with my employer, where I'm the, the chair of like a colleague-led group. So we're looking just to change the dialogue and build a culture of acceptance mm -hmm. around not only mental health, but just around the fact that all of us should be accountable and can be accountable for managing our own well-being whether that's physical, mental, financial, all these things sort of come together. At the end of last year, I won an award for my work, which was just mind blowing. So um, I won This Can Happen, which is a, a kind of organization that's looking to create um, workplace excellence around mental health. So I won their Future Leader Award. I've got the award just here. I like sometimes just sort of gazing at it. <laughs> I've been nominated for two more awards this year that have been pushed back due to COVID. Um, I'm now judging in the This Can Happen Awards this year. So they wanted a previous winner and someone would live. So it, it's just like this crazy roller coaster that, I mean, two years ago, I wouldn't have expected to be even doing something like this or dressing mm. like this. <laughs> um, now, I suppose with COVID, this is needed more than ever. So I'm still vlogging. I'm still blogging. I do a lot of outreach kind of internally at, at my organization. Um, and for me, it's just about trying to show through as many different mediums as possible how you can work your way around this and to, to the earlier conversation that it affects all of us and that we will have good and bad days so i use something that um i look mean, quite a few people use it's just a very simple i consider how i feel out of 10 each day and i write it down but i go a step further because i always like to go a step further it's in my in my signatures on linkedin and the reason for that 
is twofold. The first is it allows me to check in with myself and I know from a five out of 10, I know I'm not feeling great. I can take action to try and improve that score. But it means for other people that they've got a window into my world. So they understand that if I act in a way that maybe isn't what they would expect, that there might be a reason that sits behind that. And that enables them to tweak the way they communicate with me or to you know, reach out to me around the side of meetings, et cetera. So it, it has quite a powerful effect on creating more honest conversations as well. Can I just ask on that, Nick? Did, so you said that you put then your signature. Did you Do you mean you update your signature every day with the score? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, cool. an it's an intentional part of my routine now because it, it means that I'm checking in with myself every single day and it, it's become habitual. I think is it you, you start and you have it and 30 days later it becomes habitual for me. Yeah. That's something, it's like the first thing I do. I'd love some clever way of updating it uh, automatically, but I've not discovered that yet. <laughs> and how do you find that your colleagues kind of in um how do they have they accepted it do they understand it you know do they talk to you about it all of the above so in some of in some of the team meetings that i have we now start some of those meetings by talking about our scores oh, wow. some of the conversations have been super candid and what that means is that the nature of the conversation changes and you're talking as human beings rather than just as kind of robotic professionals so I think sometimes we certainly in the past in some of my previous roles you were I didn't feel like I was treated as a as a, as a person with a life outside of work yeah by talking about the score first it completely changes the dynamic it's not straight into to-do list and KPIs it's like, like how are you doing today I'm a two out of ten well is there anything I can do well, no there isn't but thank you and you're now aware of it you know it's not about always fixing someone I think mental health is something that you fix in people but but just by having awareness and having the level of understanding it comes back to this whole theme of kindness it's just about maybe maybe you're a bit kinder maybe you're a little bit more patient maybe you go and buy them or invite them to a virtual coffee you know it's those little cues that you can start to pick up from the score mm -hmm. love that yeah i really like that it really resonates with me um and i think what you said about kind of when you're at work you are a human being um i think that's something which al you'll be pleased to hear that is something i do feel at optics like it's it's noticed how i'm feeling it people ask me if i'm saying no i'm not actually feeling great today that is recognized and people do make an effort to treat me slightly differently or be slightly kinder which is really important i think we might have to nick the uh, score idea though that's fine. Go for it. I, 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 I can't take credit, but I'm, I'm doing my bit to, to share that a really yeah. useful framework. Cool. It's so simple as well. And yeah, the simple so, ideas are often the best. Yeah, definitely. When it comes to mental health. No point reinventing the wheel and making it more complicated than it needs to be. After this, I'll, uh, or maybe in the, in the notes that, that go around, I, I can just share a bit more information. Please, yeah, that would be great. Good. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think let's go on to um yourself during this time so um do you think that your self-care routine has changed whilst we're living as we're living now i think because of the work i've done and the awareness i've had only in a very short space of time my self-care routine was already pretty good and it was yeah. very intentional but i think my self-care routine has changed and i just had to adapt it to the situation so mm. i guess i'm grateful going back to our earlier conversation that i had that because I imagine coming to this, if you didn't have that, that it would be very easy to fall into some quite negative kind of thought process. So yeah. in terms of how I've adapted my routine, you know, I'm grateful and fortunate I've got a family. I'm conscious that you know, there are people in my organisation that live on their own that are probably struggling a lot more because they don't have the human interaction. But for me, mm -hmm. to spend time with my family, it means I've had to change my sleeping patterns a bit. So I go to bed a bit earlier because I'm up at five, six in the morning to do a few hours work before they wake up so that's like a, a small adjustment to the routine but it makes a big difference because it means I have a bit of time at lunchtime at breakfast and, it, and we have dinner together yeah and I don't know when you've got a family and children having dinner together is just so precious because rewind eight weeks I only had dinner with them twice a week now it's seven days a week and the quality of the time I'm getting has been amplified hundreds of percent um, so that's been like a really good adaptation the other thing is I'm doing more exercise now mm -hmm. I was kind of mentioned earlier that 
when I was at university and, and before that, I was always afraid to do exercise because I had such hang ups about my body. Uh, I've moved past that a fair extent, although I think sometimes some of those hang ups don't always, always go away. Um, but so I used to sort of do a gym workout at five in the morning. So you can tell I'm an early, early morning person. <laughs> now we do, me and my wife do um, like body attack or body combat, but mm -hmm. we do it every day. So because I'm up early, as soon as she's awake, we're straight downstairs and it's on the exercise. And I wrote down kind of a note before we spoke that, and I said earlier, there is no magic wand with mental health. But if I was to call out one thing that's made the biggest difference to me, that literally can take my score from like a six to an eight, it's yeah. exercise. <clears throat> and it sounds a little bit like naughty and obvious, but try telling that to someone who's not motivated to do any and it's not it, it, it's much harder and take it from someone that used to hate going to the gym if you if you don't have have the kind of urge to exercise it's hard yeah. but the boot that the um the boost it gives to your mood or at least to my mood is massive yeah i think i i would definitely agree with that and we did talk about that this morning as well in our other interview um and i think um there's an element of obviously the exercise that you've just mentioned so body combat and body attack like I've done those once they were absolute kind of intense exercising um but I know that Al's been doing the Joe Wick stuff with yes. his kids yeah. um and like I've been doing a lot more dog walking than I used to yeah. um and I can really notice when I don't do it so if it's a little bit rainy in the morning and I'm like no I'm not going to take the dog out about an hour later I can feel that I haven't been <laughs> It's so true. It's, mm. I didn't, I, I don't know I fully appreciated until lockdown how important it is. And, you know, I will kick myself and beat myself up. If I start the day and I haven't done any exercise, I instantly just feel sluggish. Yeah. My score on those days normally will be less than a seven. Most, most of the time I will feel it will impact me to that, to that degree. Yeah. Okay, so I think this leads very nicely into our kind of actionable pointers um, part of this conversation. So I know that Al wants to kind of join in at this point too, but um, so you've mentioned that exercise is one of your like big things that you'd recommend as something practical that someone can do. Um, yeah. And then we've kind of talked about the gratitude practice and journaling. Um, is there anything else that either of you want to mention um, that would be really good for people to explore or try out? Shall I start out? Go for it, Nick. So I think for me, there's a couple of things. I think the point I made earlier about flexing my day, I think there's something in much bigger in that for everybody. I think where you can work from home, and I'm conscious that there are many people that can't, where you can work from home, you should feel empowered. And I'd like to think that more organisations are moving towards that model of empowering their people. Mm -hmm. now, if, if you work best at midnight, I mean, do you really need to be waking up at six, seven in the in the morning? Yes, there are commitments within it, within the working day, but I think there are ways and means where just block your diary out and make people aware. Look, I'm really sorry, I can't take meetings at this time. Why? Oh well, actually, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, and here's why because it's great for my health, and I'll be so much more productive as a, as a result. So that I think we all need to feel the power of doing that. I think the other thing that I'm trying to do, you know, with my organisation, which is it's more touch on it, what is slowly, I'd say, having an impact is we've moved into this world quite quickly of back to back to back to back conference calls. And that is no good for your well-being. It's no good for you sitting in a chair all day. It's no good for you just like getting up, using facilities, getting food and water, seeing the outdoors and the sun. 50 minute meetings. Again, it sounds really like noddy, but it makes a difference not just to you, but to the people that you're asking on the call. You can still get as much done in 50 minutes, if anything, you'll be more productive. But then you give that, just that 10 minute window is more than enough to get up, to move around. And so, you know, what I'm trying to do with my teams is I, I'm trying to be really disciplined. If there's an hour meeting in the diary, it goes to 50. Or if we need to have two or three hours, chunk it up, make sure there's a break and get everyone to step away from their, mm -hmm. from their uh, machine. There's been um, um, two big things. Been quite a lot of talk, hasn't there, about Zoom exhaustion um, yeah. recently? And Pete, who was on the interview earlier, was saying that what what happens is that in a in a life in a life meeting, a normal meeting, you are constantly looking for like body cues and stuff. Yeah. So you're seeing people twitching and you're seeing their body move and stuff like that. 
and on zoom or teams or whatever you're doing on you don't get that interaction so your brain's working really hard to try and look for those things so you come off for an hour or two hours just feeling like mentally exhausted from them and and I certainly felt like that the first couple of weeks I was like wow this is just madness I can't believe it so I mean we've cut back quite a bit I'd say um, uh, in terms of those kind of meetings but I like your idea of cutting it back to 50 minutes and, and maybe even less than that actually as well yeah if you, can, if you can trim it even more, kudos to you. I'm, I'm starting at 50. <laughs> and, and then if I can move the needle a bit more, then great. Yeah. Perfect. I like it. Um, any other practical things that you want to mention now? Yeah, I mean, so again, just to give some context to this. So, uh, you know, I mentioned that my wife and I have been through very difficult circumstances over the last um, year or two, which had sent me and and her into some fairly dark places um, during that time, and particularly around that time, um, of which, you know, we're not very far away from six months ago was the last time um, we had a, you know, really big uh, thing to go through. So six months isn't a long time, I've got to keep reminding myself of that. But I was saying that, I've, I'm very aware of the fact that I need to find ways of getting over these those days um, and it's not easy but I have found a number of things that I really enjoy doing that have helped me a lot of which we've talked about today um, but I think the ones that I would pick up on which maybe we haven't spoken about that much are you know having the support network talking to friends is really key picking up the phone and you know as men particularly we're pretty bad I think at of uh, uh, talking about our issues and we like to go off and try and solve them ourselves quite a lot whereas actually picking up the phone and having a five minute call with someone and you know just bouncing ideas off them has been very very helpful and um, or even if they just listen to you you know it's just nice to kind of vent it a little bit rather than letting it kind of soak in and and make you worse um the other thing i found very helpful has been around mindfulness and kind of meditation um and i said nick i I don't know if you if this resonates with you or not and and the work you've done internally at your organization but i feel like meditation has got a bit of a bad name for itself a lot of people seem to think it's going out and hugging trees and stuff and it's it's not about that it's you know particularly the mindfulness part of it is you know i use an app called calm um there's others available headspace and things like that but having just 10 minutes uh, guided meditation with someone sort of talking through breathing exercises and, you know, look, concentrating on certain parts of your body. So the one I quite like doing is literally like a full body scan where you think about the top of your head right down to your toes and just really focusing mm-hmm. in on that for 10 minutes quite solidly while focusing on your breathing takes you away from the daily kind of rigmarole that you might be going through and really helps me kind of refocus and you know if I'm having a really bad day I might do 20 minutes um rather than 10 and and that's just been unbelievably powerful I, I think if anyone had said to me before you know 10 minutes could really help you your mood I wouldn't have believed them but it really can yeah. so you know mindfulness has been a really big part Becky's mentioned uh, going for walk, walks a lot more um we're really lucky where we live you know we're down in Devon Nick and as you know and you know it's beautiful landscape so we've got woods and forests around us we've got the beach that we can go to now so getting out and soaking in some of the nature has just been incredibly important and I think the thing that I've tried to change there which is probably worth saying is that I was still doing a lot of that beforehand but what I might do is I might go and listen to a podcast or I might go and make phone calls or something as I was walking around. But then you're not you're not taking in everything around you. Exactly. So so over the last few weeks, I've really tried to where I can anyway, um, put the phone in the pocket, put it on silent, you know, not have my headphones in um, like I would have done before and just kind of listen to the the nature and, like you know, the wind blowing through the trees, all those kind of things, looking at flowers like just being really mindful of what's around me so you know I think those are kind of some of the main main things alongside some of the stuff we talked about like exercise and eating well and going alcohol free during the week and all of these kind of stuff that you know I know I knew had an effect on me before and um, and so I've tried to cut a lot of that sort of stuff out yeah 
I think um, my top one, um, I know it's not really my thing to share, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know I'm meant to be the host. Um, but um, yeah, I have like little mantras that I say to myself. So I, I do do loads of the stuff that you've mentioned, but, you know, I don't want to rehash it. My piece of new information um, is, yeah, I repeat little things to myself. So if I'm having like a really bad day, I just say to myself, I'm like, tomorrow is the new day. Like, yes, I feel like this today, but I don't have to overreact. I'm not going to feel like this every single day. Tomorrow is a new day. Um, um, so, yeah. yeah, and I've got a couple of, like, different ones that, um, yeah, just how I'm, how I'm feeling. I'll just give myself a little talking to. <laughs> yeah, it's a really big, really big one, that, actually, Becky. And I do something mm -hmm. similar um, in that you know, quite often, more often than not, the next day, is better than the day you're going through anyway so yeah. and you if you can get into that mindset of knowing that that's likely to be the case then you can kind of give yourself permission to be the way you are that day and exactly. knowing that it's gonna hopefully you're gonna be better the next day and I'm sure yeah. just doing that probably helps the next day be better because you've, yeah. you've, been, you've been okay with not being okay so yeah, um, yeah. um the other thing that I do um which is this is not my idea i've stolen this um and i've stolen it from somewhere like i really just don't even want to admit that i i am quite interested in. um <laughs> so, you um, can't tell us that now no i'm going to um so you know mrs hinch the like cleaning sensation woman <laughs> yeah Go on. um rather than a to-do list she sometimes does a to-da list so rather than write yourself a to-do list in the morning like if you just feel like a bit unmotivated and you just think look I just don't want to write a to-do list I know I won't do anything on it and it will just stress me out she just keeps a little notepad and then just writes things on it throughout the day that she's done and managed to feel like she could do so then at the end of the day she's got a ta-da list so she can be like ta-da this is what I've done today and then it makes her feel better about the day and you know she she started the day thinking I'm not motivated I'm going to do nothing today and then by the end of the day she'd done loads of things and I've adopted that so sometimes on a Saturday when I'm like it's a Saturday I should be really productive today and I just feel rubbish and I don't want to I do a to do list instead of a to-do. So nice. there you go. I think that's <laughs> pretty awesome. Yeah. I really like that idea. <laughs> it doesn't matter where, where you got it from if it works <laughs> use it. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so final words of wisdom then. Is there anything final that either of you want to share before we finish? Pressure. I, I, I did have a think about this and I thought anything I'm going to say is probably going to sound cheesy and rehearsed. But I think that the one thing that I guess stitches everything together that I said, I think, is that it is the little things that make the biggest difference. I mm -hmm. kind of go back to my earlier point. Although there is no magic wand, there are so many things that are within our control that we can do to make ourselves feel better and just being aware of your feelings and acknowledging them and to your point Al around it is okay not to be okay if you can just accept that there are so many small things that can take your score from a two to a three or to a five to a six or a nine to a ten I think sometimes we kind of massively over over complicate it and yet and like I said earlier there are for some people it will be much more complicated but for the vast majority just take a step back, take a breath, and there are just little things that you can start weaving into your routine that will start to make a difference over time. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. I think thank you, that's Nick. a great, great thing to think finish on. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for your time, both of you. Yeah, thank um, you, Nick. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and hopefully we'll um do a few more things together in the future absolutely and yeah if you if you can sort of share my fancy dress challenge well with, with with your networks that would be much appreciated <laughs> absolutely will thank all you right. very much guys that's all right cheers nick cheers